today's real life Lanky Box stories will leave you shocked. You will hear the story about how Roblox ruined Justin's life. And even the story of how Adam dated his best friend, Sester. Let's go. Today, I'm going to be telling a very <laughs> serious story about how I was in a relationship and how Roblox <laughs> ruined that relationship. I would be married right now if it wasn't for Roblox. <laughs> Came Dude, in and ruined Roblox my life. Roblox blocked your love life. <laughs> Roblox! <laughs> I will start off this story by saying this happened to me early on in high school, okay? As I mentioned in our first job animation, I used to be a lifeguard because I was a swimmer, right? Okay? So in high school, I was on the team, you know? I was on the swim team, you know, acting all cool and stuff. I was on track to become the captain of the team. I was I was fast, I was I was friendly, people liked me, uh -huh. okay? I looked real nice in that speedo, <laughs> okay? I had career aspirations. I'm gonna be the captain of the team. When I'm a senior, it's gonna be great. Uh-huh. But there was one thing holding me back. <laughs> Would you like to guess what it is? Roblox. Roblox. <laughs> and I'll tell you how. I have an addictive personality. Okay, like if I if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna go all in. You know, like if it, if there's a box of donuts in front of me, <laughs> you're not I'm gonna, gonna have just to, one. I'm, I'm eating all of them <laughs> for sure. So I was swimming. I was going to school, but when I got home, I would still play video games. Uh -huh. I was not playing Roblox at the beginning. Okay? okay. Now everything changed when at one swim meet. So at the swim meets, you compete as a school against another school, right? right. Right. At one meet, I met this girl. My friend introduced me to her friend who went to a different school, and this girl's name was Maddie. Was Maddie like on the other school swim team? Yeah, she was oh. a swim team. Yeah. I ended up dating Maddie. Now, I'm not going to get into how that happened because that is irrelevant. The whole story takes place after. Now, Maddie was a very nice girl, a very fast swimmer, a very good student. The problem, however, was, as I said, this happened at the beginning of high school. So back then, I'm not able to drive. Okay? Right. Like freshman high school, you don't know how to drive. So Maddie went to a different school than me. So that's the problem, because I'm not going to see her all the time. Right, you, know you only I mean? normally get to see her on like the weekends or something. So I'm not even then, because how are we going to meet up? Like take a bus or walk or something? It was basically a long distance relationship, even though she's like two miles away. <laughs> right. Okay, we had to keep coming up with activities to do to like keep in touch. Right. You know, because otherwise like you like FaceTime somebody is kind of like, how's your day? Right, right, like, right. Pretty good. You got to find an activity that you guys can do together, but doesn't require both of you to be together. Exactly. And guess what that activity <laughs> was, Adam? I'll give you one guess. So, Maddie had a little brother named Sam. Now, Sam was a very, very smart kid. I, I like, straight up, he was actually super smart. I, I still remember his parents, and I will get into his parents in a second. His parents, like, gave him a small amount of money, and he, like, invested it in stocks, and he made them a bunch of money. And this kid's in middle school? Kid, yeah, he's like, a, he's like a kid. That's where I got all my stonk training <laughs> tips. <laughs> Maddie and Sam's parents were very... Well, I, I didn't interact with her dad very much, but their mom was very, very strict. Like, she was always, like, watching over them and just, like, strict in general as a parent, which was good. She right. was trying to keep Maddie and Sam on the path to success. To give you an example of how controlling this mom was, and not in a bad way, I remember Maddie told me one time, every time it was cold, like the winter, she had to, like, huddle under all these blankets because her mom wouldn't let her turn on the heat in the house. Because her mom was like, you gotta save money. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, she's like one of those moms. Oh, like, that's fine. Like, wow. respect, you know? But it, that was the kind of mom she was. Now, remember that. That's going to come back later. Okay. okay. So I was hanging out with Maddie, and one day she tells me, hey, my little brother plays this game online with his friends. It's called Roblox. Maybe we could all play together, and that'll give us a reason to, like, chat and hang out. Right. I was like, that's genius. Had you played Roblox before no, this point? No, I had never played Roblox before that point. Okay. I was like, I'll make it account. Why not? Okay? It was actually perfect, because we could play Roblox, and we could have, like, Skype calls at the same time. Time, so yeah. we had, like voice chat it was sick yeah okay. now i got into roblox because of that but like i said <laughs> i have an addictive personality <laughs> so as soon as i started playing roblox and these other games that like sam and maddie introduced me to i was hooked i was like dude 
<laughs> Forget being captain of the team. <laughs> I'm trying to be captain of Roblox. <laughs> so, so for real, like me and Maddie would play together, and like all the time, her little brother Sam would join us. So right. it's like three of us. Yeah. And it was really fun. Like Sam introduced me to a bunch of games in Roblox, but also games in general. So like the games that we really liked were the social ones, because obviously that allows me and Maddie to chat. Uh huh. But it was also like these games you could like farm levels. Like basically, the more time you spent in the game doing like very menial tasks, the more levels you got in the game and then like you look super cool compared to everybody else oh, because okay. you have like the most level so I, I do want to say everything up until this point was going great i was spending time with maddie it was great okay the relationship was going well everything was going well i was like this is sick however the addiction the roblox addiction kicked in and me and sam said we got to be the top we got to be the best we got to get to the top of the leaderboards yeah we got to be number one in the world in these games so we figured okay we don't have much time to play how can we level up? Uh-huh. Sam, being as smart as he was, was like, I got an idea. He was like, why don't you give me your computer? I had a laptop. Uh -huh. He's like, give me your computer. I'll take my computer. I will do some computer wizardry that will allow us to basically move the characters and farm levels even when we're at school. So it's like you're door. cheating. That's not cheating! <laughs> now, I will say I do not endorse that, okay? I don't endorse that. Play fair and square. Uh -huh. In Sam and Maddie's house, they had like this like dark basement that apparently nobody ever went into. He was like, dude, this is genius. I will turn on my computer. I'll take your laptop. I'll take Maddie's laptop. I'll take everything. I'll put it in the basement where no one ever goes. I'll just leave them running all day and like we'll just farm levels just leveling up all yeah, the time leveling up i okay. was like dude this kid is an actual genius so everything's going well and i was like wow i am on top of the world okay i got a relationship going well i'm on my way to become a swim team you're captain. leveling up your love life yeah. your roblox yeah. life your school <laughs> life everything's leveling up most importantly i'm becoming great in roblox <laughs> that was the most important thing but i will say this adam it was a slippery slope it really was. I actually started to care less about school because I was invested so much in these games. I actually started slacking off at swim practice. I was just thinking like, how am I gonna get, could I borrow more computers to like level like more accounts? How do we do this? Uh huh. Right? I was like chatting with Sam all the time. Like, okay, how are we gonna do this like over Facebook? How are we gonna level up more? How are we gonna get to the top? So everything, everything did start to kind of decline. At a certain point in the relationship, Maddie started being like, you're talking to my little brother more you talk to me. <laughs> I was like, I got a business to run here. That's how I sound now. <laughs> you talk to chicken more than you talk to me. So I started slack off in school. I started not trying swim practice. My career was on the line. My relationship with Maddie started to not go so well. It wasn't the best. And then... I heard that Sam started like trying less hard in school. Sam had always been like a perfect straight A kid. Now he was so invested in Roblox and these other games we were playing outside of Roblox, he like couldn't focus in school. Oh no. All of this story basically culminates in this one day. One fateful day. So one day on a weekend, I actually do get the chance to go see Maddie in person. Uh huh. Okay. Now I'm there. And she's getting dropped off by her mom, who, again, I've heard of, is, like, very, very strict. Uh-huh. So, you know, I'm there. I'm chilling. I'm just waiting to go hang out with her. And a car pulls up, and Maddie hops out. Her mom hops out. And her mom says, oh, so you are this Justy character. <laughs> I say, yeah, 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 yeah. And she looks at me, and she goes, you are a bad influence. I don't want you dating Maddie anymore, and don't play any more games with Sam! Are you kidding? She no way. Out. She found out the whole ploy, and she realized I was responsible for Sam not trying very hard in school. Do you want to know how she found out about our whole ploy? How? Maddie's mom literally looked at her electric bill, and it had gone up because we had so many computers running in the basement. Really? Yeah. That's actually how she figured it out. She was like, okay, something's up here. The electricity bill is going through the roof. I don't know why. And apparently she had wandered into the basement and found like 40 computers running Roblox <laughs> at the same time. I wonder what, what went through her head when she found that. Just Dude. like a bunch of characters in Roblox. <laughs> so she literally found our stash of computers. Now, again, it was Roblox and a bunch of other games as well. Uh -huh. But she was like, my son, Sam, the, the genius kid, the prodigy child, making us money with his stonks. This kid is getting distracted by these games. She must have sat him down and said, who put you up to this? And then he said, it was me. Woo. And so at that point, 
I realized, Justy, Justy, <laughs> what are you doing? Get your life back in order. I had lost a relationship. Because Wait, her mom made you guys break up? She was like, I don't want you spending more time with Maddie or Sam. You're a bad influence. And I was, I'm gonna be honest, I was so invested in those games, I had caused all these problems. Wow. It was really my fault. I said, Justy, I had to look myself in the mirror and say, Justy, you're gonna try hard again in school. You are going to try again on the swim team. You're gonna be better to people you're in relationships with. You're not gonna neglect them for video games. And, I, and then I turned my life around, I gave up Roblox. No, we play Roblox like all the time together. I'm still a dad! <laughs> Today we're gonna be telling some of the stories of the scariest days of our lives. Oh man, oh man. Adam, I'm gonna tell my story first. This was the story in which I almost actually perished. Really? Yes, I was almost <laughs> swept off the face of the earth by a crazy clown. This takes place when I was in high school. Now, in high school, I didn't have a car. So I relied on, you know, sometimes my friends had cars, they would drive me around, whatever, or my parents could give me a ride, or I could take the public transportation, uh -huh. okay? I was hanging out with my friend at school, mm -hmm. and we were both into playing video games. Okay. And so he was like, you know what, you should come over, we should play some video games together, it's gonna be crazy. I'm like, oh, let's do it. I'm like, okay, this is perfect. I actually just got the new gaming console, and you know, I've been saving up <laughs> my allowance, you know? <laughs> uh -huh. I got the new console, I could bring it over to your house, we could play it together. Okay. He's like, oh man, let's go. I say, but you know, there's one problem, I don't have a car. I can't get there. Right. He's like, no problem, my parents can come pick you up after school and we can all go together. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, done. Easy. Now, have you been to this friend's house before? No, I have not. Oh, okay. But you know, I was like, you know, we've been friends for a while, so you right. know, it don't matter. Right. The day comes, you know, I actually brought my console in my backpack to school. And so after school on Friday, his parents came and picked us up and we went to his house together. Uh -huh. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but his house just happened to be located in a pretty sketchy part of town. Oh, no. I didn't know that at the time. I was like, wow, whatever. So we get to his house, you know, it's, it's actually going fine. I'm, we're sitting there playing video games, you know, chilling, having a great time, you know, drinking some soda pop, you uh -huh. know, eating some chips, having a jolly old time. Pretty deep into the night, you know, we're still playing video games. And I'm not going to say this happens often, but I felt a little rumble in my tummy. So it was like, it was probably like midnight and I had a stomach ache. I was like, oh man. <laughs> too much like soda and I, pizza and I stuff. had one too many donuts. <laughs> Clearly. Honestly, I was I was prepared to like sleep over, right? Uh, you know, friends sleep over. Right. I was like, I gotta go home. Oh, you're this getting is, sick. I was okay. getting sick. I was actually sick. I was like, I gotta go. But the problem was his parents were asleep. Okay, his parents were asleep. I couldn't get a ride back home. Oh, right. Okay, so I was like, ah, you know. No problem, I'll take the bus. I, I'm very good at taking the bus. This will be no problem. Uh-huh. But like I said, this was not the nicest neighborhood. And so I realized about two minutes after leaving his house, I was standing in a sketchy neighborhood at night holding a video game console. I was like, ah, oh, this might not be the best idea. <laughs> okay, the bus finally arrives. I'm like, thank goodness. Okay, that took long enough. I get on the bus, I pay my change, and I go sit in the back. And I sit down with my little game console. Okay, no so problem. far this sounds pretty good. Except! No. After I get on the bus, one other person gets on the bus with me. Only one. And this guy literally looked like a crazy clown. I don't understand why to this day. He had like eye makeup on. Like his hair was like normal, but it was like very thin. It was like wispy, you know what I mean? It was literally like an empty bus, except uh -huh. for me. And he walked all the way and like sat basically like two seats away from me. So I'm... <laughs> I'm starting to panic a little bit. I said, uh... The doors closed, right? We start moving. And the guy just turns over and looks at me. I'm very confused. I don't like it. I get uncomfortable. And what do I do when I get uncomfortable, Adam? You sweat? No, usually I try to get a snack. Oh. But I couldn't eat anything. <laughs> all right. So I start to panic because I don't know where I'm at. I'm holding a game console. This guy is staring at me. There's no one else. He looks like a clown and I got no food. <laughs> so what do I do? I make one of the worst decisions of my life and I yank the bus line. I'm like, I'm getting off at the next stop. Oh no. I didn't even wait to get home. Now, I, you know, I was thinking in the back of my mind, you know, it's whatever. That was weird. Just a weird bus ride. I'll just walk home. It's no problem. Uh -huh. The guy was maybe dressed up for a YouTube video. You know, you don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I get off and I start walking. Then I realize 
This guy also got off the bus at the same time. No. So I'm no. trying to do that thing where you walk really fast, but you're not trying to look like you're running. Right. Because I was like, if I start running, this guy's going to run after me. Like, and your stomach is just going to explode. <laughs> There's too many donuts. <laughs> I'm thinking, like, what do I do? Because this guy's straight up following me. And to make matters worse, I did not have a cell phone at this time. So I'm like, ah, is this the end of Justy Chromie as we know it? I use all all of my remaining IQ brain power, I realize I need to find a store that's open late at night and go inside the store. I find a convenience store that's open 24 hours a day and I walk there, the parking lot is empty. I look around and the clown is suddenly gone. I am very confused, but then there's one car parked in the parking lot and the door opens and this bald guy gets out and starts walking towards me. Wait, was it the clown? <laughs> it was not the clown. It was a different guy. I was like, did the clown just eat this guy? Where, where did this guy even come from? I'm saying, I'm going into the store. I'm not dealing with this anymore. I go into the store and the bald guy follows me into the store. You already know I'm going straight to the chip aisle. <laughs> trying to hide in some lays, okay? <laughs> trying to mind my own business. This guy comes up to me and taps me on the shoulder. At this point, I'm pretty shook. I'm like, what is happening? I said, this, this might be it, Adam. Justy might have perished on this day. He starts to reach into his coat pocket and he pulls out a badge and says, hello, I'm Officer Kennedy. He was a police officer? He was an undercover police officer patrolling the parking lot at night. So he was wearing regular clothing and he says, where did you get this game console? He thought I stole the game console. I explained the entire story to him, the clown. At this point, do I realize how crazy I must sound? Because the clown was not there. He yeah. Was like, what is this kid talking about? I told him the whole story and then I made it home safely. <laughs> really? Yes. That's a true story. Dude. Yeah. He probably didn't believe you because you told him you were at your friend's house. And that would require you to have friends. And True. he would just look at you and know that's a lie. Why you got to follow me? <laughs> this kind of leads into my story, which also involves one of my friends. Now, I was a bit younger. I was actually in middle school when this happened. So, me and my friend, Ben, at the time, were like, okay, let's have a sleepover on Friday night. We were really close friends. Now, I was like, okay, come over to my place. We can, like, play video games. We can hang out. We can sleep over. It's going to be really fun. So, to set this story up, basically, my... My house is like a normal house, right? But in the backyard, we have a fence, and outside of the fence, there's a big forest. Okay, okay. So I was like, Ben, think of how like cool and brave we would look if we went into the haunted forest at night, and we could like tell all our friends about it. He was like, okay, cool. So I'm like, okay, at 3 a.m. at night, when my parents are asleep, we're gonna sneak out and go into the forest. 3 a.m. Yeah, because I don't want my parents knowing or like <laughs> hearing that I was like leaving the house. So we stayed up playing video games like 3 a.m. We're like, okay, dude, like it's really late. Like yeah. let's let's like go. Like this is our chance. We go into my backyard. We open the fence and we see this massive dark forest. Oh man, just pitch black. So I turn on my flashlight and I could see like maybe like five feet in front of me. Uh -huh. And we're like, okay, like. I guess this is it. Let's You're just like, go. Oh, this is still a good idea. Yeah. So yeah. we like slowly start walking forward. And like you could definitely hear like he was probably like false. You could hear like the crumpling of leaves as we stepped on him. So I'm I'm like leading the way with the flashlight. I'm like yeah. looking, kind of scanning across, making sure like we don't like trip over any like fallen trees oh, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're walking, we're walking, like no one's saying anything. It's like pitch darkness. Yeah. I turn around and uh I, I heard like crackling leaves like 20 feet in a different direction, oh, like to my side. No, tell me he's still there. So I was like, oh, like maybe he like went no. over to that path or whatever. No. So I was like, Ben, <sighs> nothing. I didn't hear anything. And then I heard in the distance back by my house, he was like, Adam, I went back. <laughs> what? Just, ben left you for dead. Dude, I think he got, he got scared and like turned around, but like didn't like tell me. Cause I was like way in front with the wow, flashlight. Adam, some friends you got. So then I'm standing there and I'm like, wait a minute. If he's back there, what was the noise I just heard? Oh no. I was like, Ben? And he's like, Adam, just turn back. It's fine. Like, just come back to the house. Just come back to the sound of my voice, Adam. Immediately, like when that happened, 
like the hairs on the back of my neck stood up and I could tell something was off. Oh. Like I got that sensation that like something or someone was watching me. So I'm standing there cause I'm like, I don't want it to like know where I am. So I turn off the uh, flashlight. Uh, what? I'm in pitch black. Wait, there's something moving around you? Yeah, like actually. And I could tell it, it's like getting closer. What? Yeah. Just run. No, I was too scared. I was like, if I run, it's gonna chase after me. So like maybe if I just stay still, it won't see me. So I'm standing there just terrified for my life. I don't know what to do. I'm like, this is a terrible idea. I'm, I'm like, I, I can tell it getting closer and closer. I turn on the flashlight because I'm like, if I'm going to die, I might as well just see what's about to happen. Oh. I quickly point the flashlight and I see this giant rabbit huh? just sitting there. Huh? Like the rabbit was just like hopping around. Was it kooky? No, no, it was not kooky. Hopping around. <laughs> no. In the middle of the forest to give you that laugh. <laughs> no, it was this giant rabbit that was making the noise. Wow. And like this giant relief just washed over me. So I like sprinted back home as fast as I could. I got back to my mom's house and like I actually felt like so cool. Like I felt like, wow, like I'm actually such a bad boy. Oh, really? No, I just cried. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'm gonna be telling a story about my summer camp disaster. What? Okay, now this is a bit of a sequel to my first ever animated story about when I dated my best friend's sister. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> this story actually takes place exactly one year after that story. It's summertime. I just got out of school, and my parents were like, we gotta send Adam back to the summer camp. Yeah, they he were gotta like, find his wife, <laughs> otherwise, he will be forever alone. Now, the camp that I went to was a two week summer camp in the middle of nowhere. It was high up in the mountains. Right. Just surrounded by trees. Right. So I was like, you know what? I kind of know what to expect. I've been there last year. It's gonna be pretty chill, right? Yeah. So I get to the camp, I unpack my bag. I'm actually one of the older kids at this camp now. You, so I'm kind of like- one year later. What do you mean one of the older kids? Like the age range of kids was only like two years. It was like, <laughs> I think like 11 to 13. Oh, so okay. So like oh, the yeah. year earlier, I was kind of in the middle. Now I'm like one of the older oh, cool kids. Cool. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything about the camp was basically the same, same place, but there was one big change. The camp leader, the man who ran the entire camp, oh, no. was new this year. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, his name was Camp Leader Brock. Brock. Now, the year prior, it was like this really nice guy. He was like super chill. Brock, Camp Leader Brock, was like a really tall, scary man who had like a beard that like went down to here. Oh, like a yeah. big beard. Oh yeah. The camp leader Brock is like, guys gather around. I have some new information about the camp. And so everyone's kind of like, oh, whoa, this is different. Uh -huh. He's like, now I expect respect from all of you. We're gonna have a nice fun camp. <laughs> I know last year, there was some sneaking around, some couples. Yeah. I just want to let everyone know that's not gonna fly this year. Oh, bro. And all of us were kind of looking around like, okay, I guess we gotta like be on our best behavior. <laughs> Adam, I guess I'm going home. <laughs> I can't slide in these DMs this year. What's the point of being here? <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm a good boy. I don't normally get in trouble. I should be fine, yeah. right? Now they had everyone gather around. They were like, guys, uh, at this camp, we just want to let everyone get to know each other. We're going to do a fun icebreaker, <laughs> and we're going to have a fun little swing dance. Oh, so yeah. So they're like, all right, everyone gather around. We're going to pair you guys up, one boy, one girl, and oh, we're just yeah. going to have fun dancing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I got paired up with this girl named Ava. Oh, Ava. Yeah, and Ava. she was like one of the taller girls at the camp. I guess oh, they nice. like assigned us by height. So like I was the tallest at the camp, and she was the tallest girl at the okay, camp. Okay, okay. So they paired us together, and they were like, all right, guys, everyone, let's start dancing. They played some like jazzy music, and we all started dancing. It was like really yeah. clumsy, but it was actually so much fun. And I was like dancing with Ava. I was like, oh yeah, I'm Adam. She's like, oh, I'm Ava. And I actually learned that Ava really, really liked drawing. <laughs> so like I was dancing with her. I was like, oh, you should like draw me later. And she what was like, what you mean? What you, are you insane? <laughs> what? You said, draw me. No, she said, I really like doing like illustrations. Yeah, and then you said, hey, draw me. I kind of said it as like a joke. I was like, oh, you should draw me. And she was like, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so I had like kind of been trying to flirt a little bit. I was like, you should draw me. <laughs> and to my surprise, she said, yes. You are such so, trash. No, I was like, oh no, here no, we go again. Oh no. <laughs> I think I'm catching feet. 
feeling. No, I for went the first girl who's in front of me. No, I went into the camp being like, I'm not going to have a camp crush. Like, I'm gonna be good this year. Every story is like the first girl that is placed in front of Adam McThirsty, you develop a crush on. The first camp, and then when you went to driving class, and now this. Are you insane? I don't know. I'm insanely in love. <laughs> you insanely an idiot. <laughs> so later that night, uh, me and Ava were hanging out in like the kitchen area. She was like, she brought her like notepad and her pencils and stuff. She was like, I want to draw you. I was like, okay, this should be fun. And she kind of started to sketch me and like start drawing and stuff. So I'm kind of like, my eyes are getting kind of like glossy. I'm just like staring at her, just already feeling myself falling for this girl. And then I see a big shadow come over her face. Oh, bruh. And I look to my left, and there was a big hand on my shoulder. Okay. And I look up, <laughs> and it's camp leader Brock. Oh! So he's like, what did I say about couples at this camp? And I was like, no, well, no, we're not a couple. We were just hanging out. And he was like, go back to your room. Yeah. And like, she didn't even get a chance to finish the drawing. Oh, So no. I just ran back to my room. I was like, oh, man, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. And yeah. I'm like, dude, okay, Brock, he does not like me. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta watch myself. Uh, like, did you do something to upset Brock. I yeah, did. he caught me with Ava earlier. Oh no, no, before that, I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. All of this builds to this final moment. Huh? So the next morning comes. Now I was hanging out with Ava, and Ava was like, "Man, the food here is so good. Like I love the desserts, but they never give you enough." <laughs> and she was like. Adam, do you want to sneak into the kitchen after everyone's gone to bed and like steal the desserts and we can like eat them together? And I was like, What are you talking about? What? Each wow, night. Ava tried to break in? <laughs> yeah. Ava, a bad girl. <laughs> and she was like, Do you want to like sneak over to the kitchen with me at night and like yeah. we'll take it and no one will know? So now I'm putting this tricky situation where it's like, I want to hang out with Ava. I like this girl. I want to show her that I'm like kind of a bad boy. But at the same time, if I get caught, I will actually probably just get kicked out of the camp, right? Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? <laughs> this is my last year going to this camp anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna risk it all. It's either get in trouble by Brock <laughs> or spend my life alone. <laughs> I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit. <laughs> so I was like, you know what, Ava? Let's do it. Yeah. We were like, okay, at midnight, after everyone else has gone to bed, let's meet outside the kitchen and then we'll like, eat all the desserts in the freezer right. and then we'll sneak back and no one will know. It'll be right, a ton of right, fun. Right. So I'm in my bunk. Every other camper is just asleep. All the other boys, I'm just sitting in my sleeping bag, just like wide awake, just kind of hoping no one sees me. I'm like, okay, it's, it's midnight, time to go. So I sneak out of my sleeping bag. I tiptoe over to the kitchen and then I see Ava and she's like, okay, follow me. So I like follow her, like we tiptoe over to the freezer, we open it up and there's just rows of desserts. Okay. And so we start to take them out and we're like, this is amazing. We start eating them. They had like, I remember they had like jello cups and like oh, chocolate yeah. cupcakes for the whole week. And she was like, <laughs> oh, by the way, like I have a surprise for you. I was uh -huh. like, what is it? She was like, I finished the drawing of you from earlier. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so she like took it out of her pocket, like unfolded it. And I was shocked. It was so good. It was like a really, really good drawing of me. And I was like, wow, like this is amazing. Yeah. And then I heard this footsteps coming down the hall. And then I heard the voice of Brock. Yeah. Being like, <laughs> Why, why is the freezer open? Because we were on the ground underneath and you couldn't see over the counter. So me and Ava were like, we gotta go, we gotta go. We, we cannot get caught. Like yeah. this is gonna be terrible. Yeah. So we literally like somersault our way around the counter just as he was walking around the other side and we run back to our beds and we like actually got away with it. It was insane. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and like, it was like, I remember my heart just beating like as I was laying in my bed, just full of like chocolate cupcakes in my stomach. I wake up in the morning and at breakfast, camp leader Brock is like, okay, I just wanna give a bit of an announcement. It appears that someone was trying to steal from the freezer last night. I, I walked out and it was open and I noticed some food was missing. I just wanna remind everyone, stealing is a big no-no at this camp. Yeah. And if we catch whoever did this, they will be punished. Huh. 
And I and me and Ava were kind of like, oh, we got away with it. It's fine. You know, it's we're just laughing to each other. And so he's like, okay, guys, let's uh, all go back to our bunks and get ready for the next activity. And he was like, uh, actually, Adam, could you stay stay back for a bit? I was like, oh no, wait, he couldn't have seen me like. That could not have happened, right? And then he's like, I was wondering uh, if you knew anything about what happened last night with the with the desserts. And I was like, no. And he was like, oh, okay, that's all right. Yeah, just go on. Oh, by the way, I uh, found this drawing of you next to the desserts. Is this yours? <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. And my heart dropped. How? Because I realized when I panicked and ran away with Ava, I dropped the picture of me that she drew right next to the desserts on the ground. And he was like, is this yours? And I was like, no. And he was like, oh, okay. And he proceeded to slowly rip up the picture of me and throw it away. And he was like, Go back to your room. So that's basically how it ends. Camp leader Brock wasn't actually able to kick me out of the camp because he technically didn't uh, have actual <laughs> proof. He ain't got no proof. Like he never Brock. saw me, but yeah. I, the rest of the camp, he hated me. Yeah. Like he just was so mean to me. Yeah. And me and Ava actually became really good friends. We <laughs> laugh about it. But that was yeah. the story of how my summer camp almost ended in disaster. Wow. Adam, that was a real nice story. <laughs> now why don't I do a little drawing of you because you didn't get that drawing. Oh, okay. You're gonna draw me like Ava drew me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay I pose fix my nice. Hair. Yeah. Pose nice. Three, two, one. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't look anything like me. <laughs> now, the story I'm gonna be telling today is when I dated my best friend's sister. What are you talking? <laughs> Okay, all right, hold on, hold on. This story gets crazy. I don't crazy. have, I don't have a sister, so I already know you making this up. No, no, my my other best friend. What are you talking? I am your only best friend. No. Yes. <laughs> yes, was, I am. This was before. Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. Well, this yes, story. Yes, I am. <laughs> So this is a completely true story. Now, I was probably around 13 years old and my parents sent me off to a summer camp for two weeks. 13 years old, so that would be last year for you? <laughs> This summer camp was in the mountains. Okay, in the mountains? so picture a camp in the middle of nowhere. Like so, like some snowy mountains or some hot. No, no, no it was hot in the summer. Oh yeah. man! So there was about 30 other campers besides me. At that age, I was so shy. I didn't talk to anybody. So half the campers were guys and half were girls. And okay. this was before I really ever talked to girls, like right. ever. So oh, you must have showed up and were like, "What are these? <laughs> no. Oh, these are what girls look like." This the second I got there, my parents dropped me off, right? Uh -huh. And they're like, all right, uh -huh. have a good next two weeks. Uh -huh. They left. Okay. I was so scared yeah. that I went to the bathroom yeah. and my nose started bleeding. What? Yeah. That's Wait, how nervous that, I was. That's like some scary movie, spooky, middle of the woods stuff. And then there was no toilet paper in the stall yet because they were, they were still setting up the camp. <laughs> So I was hiding and I had to use my finger to stop the nosebleed. And so I, I came out of the bathroom with blood all over my you hands. Came the, you came out of the bathroom. All the other campers like, did that guy just attack a small animal in the bathroom stall? The whole point of that was saying I was terrified of this camp. They had like the introduction. So they had all the camp counselors gather all the kids around, right? And we yeah. all gathered in this big cafeteria room. At this initial meeting with the counselors, they said the rules, you know, you have to be in bed by this time. And one of the big rules they said was there is no dating at this camp. No dating? At You're all. only there for two weeks. Exactly. How do you date somebody in two weeks? You'd be amazed. It idiot. takes me two <laughs> lifetimes to date somebody. How are you going to make a relationship in two weeks? <laughs> See, I was like, well, that shouldn't really bother me. I'm not going to get a girlfriend here because I haven't had one before, right? True, true. Well, what if I told you... I actually got a girlfriend here. I would say that's about as fake as Bigfoot himself. <laughs> the first friend I made at this camp, his uh -huh. name was Ryan. Ryan. And he was cooler. He was older. He was one of the 15-year-old kids there. Wow. And he was way cooler. He had like shaggy hair and he was like a skater dude. That and here I was cool. with my Pokemon cards and all this stuff. You brought Pokemon cards yeah. to camp? I got lonely. 
<laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I might not make any friends at this camp, but at least I can talk to my Pikachu. <laughs> I became friends with this Ryan guy, and uh -huh. he basically took me under his wing. Where this story is headed, it sounds like you're gonna end up telling me you started dating Ryan. Because <laughs> that's what this sounds like. Well, Ryan had a younger sister at the camp oh, oh, named Rachel, this... who was my age. Okay, I see where this uh -huh. is going. So basically, Yikes. basically at meal times when we eat in the cafeteria, I would eat with Ryan because I was his friend, right? Yeah, because you're so you got to sit at the cool table. Exactly, uh -huh. and basically his. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. sister Rachel would eat with him too because she was nervous and new, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. So we all ended up eating together, me, Ryan, and Rachel. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. I, I, I know, I know this story is getting very uh, suspenseful, <laughs> but there's really only one thing on my mind, which was, how was the food at the cafeteria? <laughs> it was really good. Okay, what yeah. were you guys eating? Give me, paint me a picture. We had a lot of like meatballs, lasagna, mashed potatoes, stuff like that. Okay, yeah. okay, I'm just, now I'm just picturing you eating a giant meatball with your new buddies. Okay, okay. And me and Rachel started talking more because we were already around each other. Around each other eating those meatballs. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So I would, I would talk to her. We were both really shy people, but we would talk a lot more and we kind of became friends. And like, I think she actually, I would show her my Pokemon cards. And she thought they were cool. Stop. Stop. She thought they were cool. That's, re that's really how you thought you want to impress her? What if I pull out my holographic Charizard? Do you want to date me now? I kind of started to develop, you know, a little bit of a crush on her. I yeah. got a little more nervous what, when I was now, around now, her. Slow it down. What about her drew you to her? Well, she was a girl. Uh, she talked to me. And that was, that was enough. <laughs> Well, I hadn't she, had that well, before. She was a girl and she didn't run away when I talked to her. That's all I needed. So another thing I forgot to mention was there was no cell phone service at the camp. What? Because you were so high up in the mountain. We weren't allowed to text each other because we couldn't text each other. Yeah. So at night, the counselors let the boys and girls pass notes, written notes in between each other. So all the boys would be in one room and all the girls would be in another. And the counselors would bring notes back and forth in between the two rooms. Oh, it's like a primitive version of DM. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. now I understand. I had to shoot my shot, you know, I had to go for it. So I wrote a little note to Rachel and I said, hey, like, what is it like having your older brother at this camp? Ha ha ha, I had some like ha -ha. smiley faces. I had some ha ha he he. Yeah, and I, I sent it over to her. Now, the counselors read each message before they give it to her, right? Oh. Because they don't want you guys like secretly being like, yo, like let's, you know, let's prank someone or uh, whatever. Uh -huh, so they read the messages uh -huh. and then they give it to you, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the counselor took my note. He's like, okay, cool. Gave it to Rachel. Uh -huh. I got a note back from Rachel. Uh -huh. She's like, oh, it's so nice. Ha -ha. And then I was like, should I just go for it? Should I hope that they don't read my message? Wait, you really, wow, you really took that big of a risk? Yeah. No way. Yeah. No way. So I said, hey, Rachel, I'll be honest. I think you're really cute and I like you. There's no way. I literally There's said no that. Way. I literally no way. said that. And you just were banking on the fact that they wouldn't read it? Yeah. I crumpled it up really tiny and put it with all my other friends' notes. And I'm like, oh, here's all our notes. And then they went over to pass it back. And I was praying they wouldn't intercept it. What if they read it? You would get kicked out of that camp so fast. Yeah. I, mean, I knew it was you from the start in the bathroom. You little note passing, bloody handed little fiend. The note got through. Wow. I got one of the cooler counselors. He didn't really look at them that closely. Yeah. And then he delivered it to Rachel. I, I'm impressed. You you might have a future working at the Justy Spy Corp. Because that, that is impressive. Good job. Yeah. Message now, received. Now, I did not get a message back. So that night, she I left was you, like, she left you on red. Literally, literally, literally. <laughs> Yikes. She left me on red, and I was like, ah, oh, I blew it. Like I shouldn't. Have. Well, maybe it got intercepted. Like I started going to like, what was the worst case scenario? The next day at lunch, I was really nervous, right? Because yeah. I was like, did she read it? Did she yeah. not? Did it get intercepted? Am I gonna get in trouble? Sitting there eating your meatballs. So I pull up next to Rachel. Yes. And I set my food down. Yes. Uh, and I'm just kind of like, hey, how's it going? Uh huh. And uh, she's like, hey, um, by the way. I like you too. What? Yeah, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. 
mean? She oh. was like, I didn't want to send one back because I was worried that they would get intercepted. Uh -huh, uh -huh, this uh -huh. is true. This yeah, is a hey, true story. Hey, you got a lot of us, Adam. Hey, you got a lot of us, Adam. You got, we like you. We, you got a lot of us. You really, you really expect me to believe you just came down and like in a movie. She goes, I like you too. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. From that point forward, we hung out all the time. We were never allowed to be alone at camp. We were like, hey, like once the camp is over, like we should become boyfriend and girlfriend. The camp is over. We go home. On the drive home, I texted her and I was like, hey, Rachel, it was so great to meet you. Like, I really hope we can keep hanging out. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah. So I asked her on a date. I was like, I'm just going to go for it. This is my one chance. Yeah, you got to shoot your shot. You yeah. Guys. Hey, you gotta so 13 year old Adam was like, you know what? what where should I take her? to the movies. So I'm like, hey, Rachel, I'd love to take you to the movies. And she said, okay, let's go. I had my dad drive me to the movies, but guess who drove her to the movies? Her brother, Ryan. Oh, oh. And her parents oh, made no. Ryan oh, sit in between us at the movies. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's not even the saddest part of the movie. What happened? So we finished the movie, right? Yeah. I said pretty much nothing to her the entire time because I was so nervous. Yep. So we go out to the lobby of the movie theater where they sell the popcorn and they have the games and all that stuff. My dad comes to pick me up and I see him walking up into the theater and he's like, all right, say goodbye. Say goodbye. This was my chance. My one chance to hug her or kiss her on the cheek. Oh yeah, in your dreams. And you know what I do? Yeah, what? I went in for the hug yep. and I hugged Ryan and then I high-fived Rachel. <laughs> and then I left. I was so nervous. <laughs> about my dad seeing me with a girl. I hugged Ryan, and then I went for the high five on Rachel. <laughs> Stop. And then, on the way home, she broke up with me through time. <laughs> she texted me, she's like, I don't think this is gonna work out. And then we never talked again. It's because you're a bad high fiver. That's what it is. That's what it is. You had those sweaty hands. No. When he high fived her, her whole hand was just covered instantly in Adam's sweat. And that's it. We that's broke the up. Story. She broke up with me. And I never <laughs> talked to her again. And I never talked to another girl again in my life. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, that was 100% real. I did not make up a single part of that. Why would you tell me that story? Like what? Like we sat down here, do a little ha ha he he, a little fun animated story, and now I just literally feel depressed. <laughs> okay, guys, we really hope you enjoyed that first animated series. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Let us know if you want us to actually do more of these. <laughs> you really probably slid in <laughs> Rachel's DMs and said, "Hey, I'm a boy with love," and she hit you back with, "Let's kill this." <laughs> I have a real story for you today. Really? This is the story of how I had an online wife. <laughs> what? What is so funny? This happened. This is real. Now, when I get into this story, Adam, I'm gonna leave these with you, okay? I got you some tissues. Oh, okay. This one is pretty. This one is pretty sad. I was 10 years old. 10 years I old. Was, I think I was in fifth grade. Fifth, I think I was in fifth grade. Okay. Back then, I was a real awkward kid. Still am now, okay? But I was very, very uncomfortable in social situations. <laughs> and there was this girl. Her name was Amy. Okay. And I, I liked her for probably two years. Uh-huh. Okay, ever since fourth grade, I'd be on the playground just chilling, you know, minding my own business. Sometimes with friends, most of the time without <laughs> friends. You know what I mean? <laughs> my favorite game in fifth grade was to go down the slide as fast as I could. Uh -huh. There's a big slide that went in a circle, and I'll just, uh, just jump on it and go down as fast as I could. I can just imagine you like trying to find like the fastest way, like putting oh, butter oh, on the slide. I <laughs> Every time I would go play on the slide, Amy, I noticed, would always be nearby, just hanging out on the monkey bars, oh. just chilling. Now this honestly was like a real life anime. Everybody knows Justy loves anime. This was like a real life anime. Uh -huh. I was like the quiet kid, didn't have many friends, but this one girl, we never talked, but she would be like around. I was like, this might be the one. So around this time, I was, like I said, a shy, awkward kid, uh -huh. but I had one true love. Well, I guess- Chicken. I, well, yeah, I love food, okay? <laughs> I had two true loves, okay? The first was food. The second was this online game called Maple Store. Oh. Now, a lot of people know this game. Look, Adam, honestly, I was addicted. I was full on addicted. Like literally every day when school would end, I would run home. Ah, 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 
Ah! I would get home as fast as I could. Yeah, right. Yes, you I were would. running like this. I was Naruto. You were. Ah! <laughs> God, I need to get back to the village hidden in the leaves. I'm gonna be the next Hokage of Maple Story. In real life, I was a noob. Like I had, I had no, not that many friends. I wasn't that good in school. You know what I mean? But in Maple Story, I was a baller in Maple Story. Like you have to understand. One of my big goals was to get my account to level 120. Now, for anyone who knows now, you could do that in like a day in Maple Story. <laughs> but back then, it took literally like six months of really? just like every day grinding for hours. It took like a year. Like literally. I cared more about my life in that game than out of the game. Is that crazy? No, that's not crazy. That's just sad. It, it was a that's little bit sad. sad. It was a little bit sad. But it became less sad because at that time, everyone in my class slowly started to catch on and play Maple Story. So everyone, including Amy, started playing Maple Story. I would play with all the kids in class uh -huh. and Amy would be there too. I don't remember how it happened, but we just slowly started to just kind of like, you can like privately chat in uh -huh. that game one, two, uh -huh. and we would slowly start to do that over time. At that same time, everyone started playing Maple Story. I started talking to her a bit more. Uh -huh. And then we had a school play. Like all the fifth graders were in a play together. And so she got, Amy got cast as like the pretty, like the lead female role. She's like this like princess, like lady, uh -huh. very fancy. And I got cast as the jester, as the clown, <laughs> okay? Which is very suiting, very fitting. And this jester is actually her servant. We would not only chat in the game, but slowly we would like hang out and like rehearse lines uh -huh. and just got to know each other better. This was like one of the happiest periods of my life. Cause I was playing Maple Story, having fun, chatting with this girl that I liked for two years. Wait, but basically what you're saying is, in the happiest time of your life, yes. most of it was spent in Maple Story. Yes. And when you're not playing Maple Story, you're pretending to be someone else in a play. Yes. So when you're happiest, you're not yourself ever. That's correct, because look at my life now. I'm just trapped in a room with Dumbo, <laughs> making these videos. Blink once for help. Blink once for help, please. Somebody help me. That's true. That's true. Okay, so like I was saying, this was honestly one of the better periods of my life. Uh -huh. I was having fun online. I was chatting with this girl I liked for two years. People in school started to talk to me more because they knew I knew about this game. And I was hanging out with her IRL in real life talking about this play. It was epic. It was a great time. Do you think she liked you back? Did you know? I know she did because we became boyfriend and girlfriend and online. We had a marriage ceremony yeah, in Maple right. Story. Yes, we did. The whole guild was there. Really? We had a marriage ceremony in a video game. It was crazy. I had a wife, you guys. You okay. got married. Why did you give me these tissues, though? When does this get sad? <laughs> we had it. We taken the lanky ship <laughs> into some rough waters right now. <laughs> what was it like, though, to have a girlfriend? It was, it was honestly, like I said, one of the happiest times in my life. We would hold hands on the playground. And let me tell you, her hands were nice. They were soft. They were not sweet. Sweaty like these, okay? They were nice and dry, and she smelled like strawberries. I still remember that to this day. It was crazy. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm actually now worried because I feel like I'm invested in this relationship. Yes. And you gave me these tissues. Okay, I'll explain. Not only were people talking to each other on Maple Story, but we also back then, do you remember people had like instant messenger? It oh, was like, of course. It was like Facebook chat or like DMs, but on the computer, uh -huh. okay? And so everyone in the class had IM, uh -huh. instant messenger. Now, introducing. I'm only going to refer to this person as X, okay? No names, just X. No longer Amy, just No, this X. is not Amy. No, this oh. is a different person. Oh. This is oh. a different girl. Oh. X. X is older, and X might, this not a leak, she might be a recurring character in a future story. I might tell. I'm not sure. Okay. So X came into the instant messenger, and she would start messaging me. Being like, oh, ha ha, he he, just making some conversation. I didn't know this at the time, but she was also messaging Amy at the same time. And what did so she say? X would literally come in the chat and be like, you know, we just got to know each other. And then she was like, oh, how is your relationship going? I was like, oh, you know, it's going really well. And she would ask me questions like, what is it like to spend time with Amy, etc. And I was like, oh, you know, I get really nervous. Like, I really like her, etc. And she would twist everything and be like, oh, you're nervous around her? That means she's not the one. 
Why okay. was she trying to break you and Amy up? That might be for a future story. Oh. Okay, she came in the chat and would just like ask me and Amy all these questions. Like she'd be like, I remember she was like, oh, what is it like when you're with Amy? And I'd be like, oh yeah, sometimes Amy like blushes and turns really red when we hang out. And then she would be like, no, Justin, when a girl turns red around you, it means she doesn't like you and you're embarrassing her. And I was like, no, 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 please. And I believed her because she was older. I was like, why would she just lie? Oh no. Like, why would she lie? And I didn't know this at the time. She was doing the same thing to Amy about me. What? I don't understand it. What kind of person does this? Me and Amy started to get uncomfortable around each other and I noticed like she would be on Maple Story less often, and like when we rehearsed lines, it, it just didn't feel the same. It was literally like we were in an anime. Like we liked each other, but it was getting weird, and we didn't have the bravery, the courage to tell each other like what's going on. It was like if you were the stem and Amy was the strawberry, and X took <laughs> Amy and plucked her off the vine. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sure. So this whole story culminates at one of my friend's birthday parties, uh -huh. okay? So like I said, my life was getting better. I was making some friends. I got invited to this friend's birthday party. Uh -huh. And naturally, what is everyone doing at the party? Hanging out. No, we're all on our own computers playing <laughs> Maple Story, <laughs> just in the same room. Oh. Okay? And now all the boys are there and a lot of the girls are there too. Amy's there? Amy's there. Okay. Okay, X is not there. Everyone knew like, oh, there's some drama going on. Like what's Between going on? Between Justin and Amy. Between Justin and Amy. Cause we were like the only couple in the class. Yeah, like, you guys got married. We, 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 that was my wife. <laughs> Somehow me and Amy ended up like in a closet. People were like, you guys need to go sort this out. Wait. Yeah, we were in a closet. I don't really know why. People thought that was appropriate at the time. <laughs> and we both just looked at each other and it was so sad. We were just like, I, I think we have to break up. I I'm noticing all these signs. It's getting awkward. We just have to break this up. But like, we didn't know at the time that X had come in and talked to both of us on the side. Can you get a divorce in Maple Story? No, I don't think so. So you're technically still married to her? Ah, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> but yeah, that that was that was oh, the whole that man. was the whole relationship. I do need these, man. That was the whole relationship. Guys, this there's is, I'm sad. Now. There's a serious moral to that story. Even if you're afraid to tell someone how you feel, you just do it anyways cuz you never know what's going on behind the scenes. And if I had just said something, we wouldn't have had to break up. Do you know where Amy is now? Amy's chilling now. I'm still friends with her on Facebook. She's got a great relationship. I'm still here, single as a Pringle, making videos with this guy. Uh, 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 uh. All right guys, that's going to do it. So make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you want more of this type of series or if you want to find out more. I'm I'm curious now about the mystery story with X. But Justin, wait, you have to figure this out. Are you actually still technically married to Amy? That's actually a good question. I don't know. I need I need to actually make a call to my lawyer. Yes, hello? I need to file for online divorce, okay? Today, the story I'm gonna be telling you and the Lanky fam is the origins of the CEO of Justy Corp International Inc, AKA Chief Thickness Officer, AKA Number one businessman. You. In the, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tell you about how when I was in third grade, I started my very first business for a school project. It was called the Paperclip Pals. And I have to, <laughs> hold on. Let me, let me explain. Stop. Let me explain. Now, like any good story, I started my business for one reason. Can you guess what that is? A girl. Yes, it was not for really? money. It was to win the girl. Yes, I was in third grade, okay, and there was a girl in my class named Janice. I'm the quiet kid sitting in the back of the classroom, and I'm like, Janice? Justy, our names kind of sound the J -J. same. JJ. It's, it's fate. It's JJ. It's, it's fate. J and Bay. Okay. I didn't okay. even think about that. True, true, okay. I was a very quiet kid in third grade. Okay, very well behaved, okay. Actually, the teacher had a system in class back in third grade where everybody's name was on a board. Did you guys have this? Yeah. With like the card. Yup. Dude, this is child abuse, <laughs> I'll be honest, okay. We had everybody's name up on the wall and everyone had a card and it starts green. Yup. And if you misbehave. You get a yellow. You got a yellow. And if you misbehave again, you get a red. You get a red. And then your parents have to get talked to by yeah. a teacher. Okay, now you already know there's a bunch of yellow on the board. There's a bunch of red because you know kids misbehaving. Hey, get what color yellow. were you, Justin? Hey, hey, you already know I was all green. I was the best behaved kid in class. I honestly was well behaved, but honestly, part of it was because I tried to impress Janice. So, I was like, oh, so you thought if you didn't get in trouble, she'd be like, wow, that guy never gets in trouble. 
I don't like dating bad boys. I want a good boy. I'm a kid with Justin. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I had not yet listened to Red Velvet. I didn't know girls like bad boys. I thought she wanted a good boy. Basically, in third grade, I was very awkward, very shy. But I thought, look, if I want to get noticed by Janice, I got to do something crazy. I got to stand out. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So, our final project in third grade, it was a paper airplane competition. Okay, so this was like the big final project at the end of the year. Oh, that man. was like a big part of your grade? I, w I was sweating. I was, okay. I was crunching the numbers. I, okay. I can imagine you on your laptop. You got Maple Story in one tab. <laughs> and like a paperclip document in the other and you're just typing like crazy. I got the NASA documents, like the aerodynamics. No, okay, so this is a class-wide competition. It's every kid versus every kid, only one winner will emerge. It's like the Hunger Games, but in third grade. <laughs> But instead of attacking people, we had paper airplanes, okay? <laughs> I thought if I won, Janice will notice me. And also, after the contest, we were gonna have an ice cream party. Oh. So that was my chance. Okay, so your, your goal was yes. to win the paper airplane contest. Yes. Then take Janice, after you've impressed her, on a date to the ice cream party. Oh, I would. I was gonna ask for her hand in marriage now, at the party. Now, had you talked to Janice at all before this? Not once in my life. Did Never. she know you existed? Uh, uh, I don't, looking back on it, not at all. <laughs> I have to explain how this contest works. There's a bunch of different events, like who can get their plane the farthest, right. whose plane can stay in the air the longest, or who could like hit a target like the most accurate. The key was everybody starts with a different resource. So you might have like tape. I had paper clips. That's what I was assigned. Uh -huh. Okay, someone else had scissors. And so the whole idea is everyone needs to work together and trade like a business. Oh, so you would be like, I'll trade you 10 paper clips to use your scissors. Yes, something exactly. like that. And oh, the scissors guy okay. would be like, you can only have them for five minutes. Oh. And you'd be like, how about for seven minutes if I throw in another paper clip? <laughs> it was very intense. So you already know, I have my little desk, my little table in it. I made a little sign in the front that was called Paper Clip Pals, I sell paper clips. Well, you didn't have friends, so it would have been Paper Clip Pal. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> just one pal. Paper clip person. It's just me. <laughs> Look, I had no friends, and also nobody wanted to buy paper. Why would you use a paper clip on a plane? It would weigh it down. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. <laughs> so I was just, I was just so I, wet. And I was no one wants it. <laughs> no business. Business a little bit slow today. But I thought, look, I need to get really good with one sheet of paper. Uh -huh. I got one sheet and that's it. I got no other resources. It was me versus everybody else. It was like I was in an anime. Let's go. I had one friend back then. She didn't go to school with me. She was like a neighborhood friend. Was it your mom? <laughs> it was my grandma. <laughs> It was a girl my age, and her name was Natalie. She was like a neighborhood friend. Why didn't you like her? She she actually talked to you. I don't know. <laughs> my IQ had not yet reached 900 by this oh. point. I didn't understand how romance worked. <laughs> One of Natalie's hobbies was origami. Okay. And she used to teach me about folding, about all this different stuff. So actually, I was getting private lessons in the art of paper sorcery. So all these kids out here trading their resources for scissors, I'm like, I could just fold this and rip it. Okay, this sounds a lot like Natalie liked you and you didn't realize it until like five years later. Like she's teaching you origami. <laughs> she's probably doing one of these where she's like helping you fold the paper. Stop touching my hand. Do you realize she probably liked you? I realized you that had now. a girl that liked you and you traded her. For a girl that didn't even talk to you. That is the story of my life, Adam. I I, I must have folded over a thousand paper. I was, you just imagine my room covered in airplanes. It's it got like some like Eye of the Tiger, like theme action music, oh, just folding paper. I was sweating, I had a headband. Da, 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 da. It was legendary. I still had not sold a single paper clip up until this point, but I basically developed the most legendary paper aircraft of all time. Adam, I folded so many of these. I literally spent hundreds of hours. I, I folded so many of these that even now, I folded one today right here. That's, wait, this is the airplane? This was my airplane. <laughs> is this a joke? <laughs> Guys, this is one sheet of paper. It is perfectly aerodynamically crafted to just, ah, this thing, what, what, ah. Ah! Wait, this is your paper airplane? That was my paper airplane. This is a paper square plane. <laughs> that was pretty good. Okay, that was, yeah. that was pretty good. That was pretty good. This was going to carry me to my dreams. I could already vision me and Janice on a huge version of this flying through the galaxy together in love. That was my dream. This
This is an inspirational story. I turned my weakness into my strength because you know what I did? I said the paperclip pals are closed for business, everybody. I refuse to trade with anyone. You want to know why? Because I stuck all 100 of my paperclips on this thing. Wait, so you made a square <laughs> from paper and you just covered it with paper clips? Yeah, so basically, on the big day- And all the other kids showed up with actual paper airplanes. Mm -hmm. And then Justin Chroma <laughs> whipping it out in the back like Yu-Gi-Oh with the secret trap card. Just put it out. Everybody else had their little planes, little dingy planes. Uh -huh. I was basically throwing around like a metal tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> like it was not even close. People were like, how far can you get? I was just like, Ugh. I was like, I was, it was like I was throwing a rock. I I won every event. I smoked everybody. Really? With one sheet of paper because it was just a metal ball. <laughs> I just won. Okay, now. What did your teacher think? More importantly, what did Janice think? This is where the story takes a bit of a tragic turn. I thought in my head, Janice, the teachers, everybody, all my classmates must be like, wow, he's so smart. He figured out how to turn his weakness of paper clips into a strength. But you know what was actually happening? What? Everyone was just super annoyed and like, this guy cheated. They're like, this guy has no friends and this is why. He cheated. I was ready. I was like, guys, where's my trophy? And, and where's Janice? I'm ready to ask for her hand in marriage. But the teacher came up to me and you know what they said? What? They said, Justy, you are disqualified. <laughs> Really? I was actually disqualified. And you know what else? They said I had bad sportsmanship and I was banned from the ice cream party. <laughs> so you had to sit inside yeah. probably. I actually did. In yep. some hot classroom yep. while all the kids, including Janice, are outside. They were on the field eating, eating ice, ice cream. Yep. So you know some some stories end with, you know, the hero gets the girl, he gets the prize. Uh-huh. Or sometimes he just gets one and loses the other. Yeah. I lost both. Okay, I just feel sad now because I'm just <laughs> I'm just picturing everyone just eating ice cream having a good time and you just crying <laughs> looking at your looking at your name with the green next to it thinking no i am loved people still like me you know adam i really did everything i could to try and get janice to like me you know i had the green behavior card i tried to win the competition uh -huh. to win her heart i tried to turn into a bad boy but ultimately I was left a sad boy. <laughs> At the end of the day, I know it's a sad story, but I was proud of myself. I turned a disadvantage into an advantage, and I did win. They never said I couldn't do that. They just made up the rules later. There is a real moral here, because I realized, look, hey, the teachers might not like you. The other kids might not like you. Janice might not like you. But I liked myself. I respected myself, because I won. I beat the odds. That's the moral of the story. Well, you know what the real moral is? What? If you're not good enough, uh -huh. just cheat. <laughs> <laughs>